Hello, welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. It's time for another update on my tilting Velomobile prototype project, and this time I've got the steering mechanism all finished, or mostly finished, so let's have a closer look. So the way this works is we effectively have tank type steering with one right hand and one left hand handlebar, independent from each other and hinged at the bottom with ball bearings. These are connected to carbon fibre push rods, or pull rods, I suppose, depending on whether they're pushing or pulling, one on the right, one on the left. The push rods transmit the pushing and pulling to this steel bell crank assembly at the front here, uh, and that in turn pushes and pulls the tie rods that are connected to the steering uprights. The push rods are made of uh, one bit of 22mm, I think, outside diameter carbon fibre with a smaller piece of 20mm tube inserted into it so telescoping in I've made these aluminium collar clamps so the length of the push rods can be adjusted uh, so that the position of the handlebars can be moved forwards and backwards. At the inner end of the handlebars you've got these aluminium levers I've got a number of drill holes in them so that the position of the uh, rod end bearing can be adjusted to adjust the throw of the crank. So the handlebars are held in place with this assembly here. Basically this is temporary, but I've got a, a plywood top and a bottom, then aluminium uprights, uh, board for one large diameter ball race here, and a smaller ball race on the inside there. You can see in this bit here, there's a bit of a tight fit to get the chain and the push rods all together, along with the various cranks, the handlebars and the uprights, but it all fits together reasonably well. The handlebars are a little on the long side at the moment but I will trim these off probably to about here once I've worked out what the ideal length is. The position of the handlebar assembly here can be slid along the frame or the chassis uh, to give some adjustment depending on the height of the rider and that's why the length of the push rods is adjustable. At the moment I've got these two clamps in place to prevent the tilting from working so I'll just take those off and show you how it works. So that's how it's all coming together. Let's take a closer look at how I made some of the parts. The first job is to cut the steel tube for the handlebars to length. I'm using 7 8 inch diameter steel tube. The latest exciting delivery to arrive is these ball bearings. The handlebar material is this 7 8 inch diameter steel tube, 7 8 inches being the standard diameter for handlebars. 7 8 inches diameter is slightly greater than 22 millimetres, uh, and because the availability of 22 mil bore ball bearings was much greater, the choice was greater, um, I'm going to have to turn down the end of the bar to 22 millimetres diameter so I can get these ball races to, to slide on. So the way this is going to work is the larger diameter ball race is going to slide onto the bar to about that position, and then I'm going to stick a pin in the end, which is going to fit into the bore of this small ball bearing, which is going to fit there. Right, I'm now going to turn down the outer ends of these steel tubes. Uh, for this job I'm going to use my Warco combined lathe milling machine. Uh, the reason I'm using this and not the MIFID is I can get a one inch tube down the spindle bore of this lathe, which I can't do on the MIFID. Now to bend the tube. The problem was I didn't have a tube bender at this stage so I got myself onto YouTube and found this channel from Mr Technique which showed you how to bend a tube by cutting segments out of it. So I've marked up the tube and this is how I'm going to cut it with the hacksaw. No. So back onto Amazon looking for a plan B and I found this lovely tube bender. So into the basket. So 
it's actually surprisingly difficult to bend a 22 mil diameter tube, at least when you're as weak as I am, so I had to bring in some help. And between the two of us, we got the job done. So two nicely bent handlebars. Now I'm on to making the aluminium uprights that are going to support the handlebars. So back to the bandsaw and I need four of these. Two, three, four. Over to the milling machine and I'm facing the ends of these bits of rectangular section bar using my fly cutter. So they all end up exactly the same length. Now to drill the bolt holes in the end, centre drilling and tapping drill size holes. I've set up the table stops on the milling machine so I can repeatedly drill these holes in the right position. There's 16 in total to drill, two at each end of each of the four pieces of bar. Now I'm tapping these M5, I think it was. 16 of those to do, so pretty boring. Now to machine out the large diameter hole for the large ball bearing. Starting off with a 20 mil drill bit to get rid of most of the waste metal. and finishing the bore to size using a boring head. What I'm after is a light press fit on the ball bearings. There's a slight step on the inside of that hole to stop the ball bearings going through. The next thing to make is the lever arms for the handlebars. Uh, I'm going to make these out of a piece of aluminium bar stock. Back to the bandsaw, cut off two of these blanks. I'm now centre drilling the hole positions in the milling machine. I've got the blanks resting on parallels in the machine vice. I'm using the digital readout to drill the holes in exactly the right position. I'm positioning these two blanks against the end of the vice jaws so that I can reposition them repeatedly. So I can take them out, put them back again, and the holes will still be in exactly the same place. So I've started off by centre drilling. Now I'm drilling through 6mm. What I should have done is tap those four holes M6, but I missed a trick there. The larger hole at the end is the one that's going to fit over the 22mm diameter handlebars. So again, gradually opening out that hole to size using a large drill bit. Always quite a satisfying job. And finally, using a boring head to bore those holes, 22mm diameter. I need a slightly loose fit here so that they can slide onto the bars easily but then clamp tight. I'm now using a deburring tool to deburr those holes. The next job is to round over the ends of those uh, cranks using a rotary table in the milling machine. And what I'm doing here is positioning the rotary table directly beneath the spindle bore of the milling machine, and similarly for the workpiece. And that's the workpiece centred. I'm just going to secure these dogs to stop the workpiece moving on the rotary table. And I've zeroed the X and the Y axes on the digital readout. I'm using an end mill to round over the end of the workpiece. Quite a lot of this cut is using a climbing cut, so I've tightened the table clamp slightly to stop the workpiece snatching. I'm advancing the depth of cut by about one millimetre each time. You can't take this at one pass.
Now on to the final cuts, again using a climbing cut to give a better finish on the workpiece. These are sped up, these clips. So that's progress on the two work pieces so far. I'm now using the end mill again to chew away some of the excess material. I'm using a climbing cut here and in order to stop it snatching I've lightly tightened the clamps on the slides to keep the table nice and tight. Just need to chew away that little nubbin on the end of the workpiece, again using an end mill. You can take light plunge cuts using an end mill as long as you're not using the whole diameter. Again, the final cut is using a climbing cut to give a nice finish on the workpiece. Here I'm using my fly cutter to take away the angled piece on the side of the workpiece. I have to advance the cut very slightly each time. I've repositioned the work in the vise here just to hold it more securely as I take the final cuts. I have two work pieces that are basically identical, close enough. Now I'm using a slot drill to cut the recess for the grub screw and drilling tapping drill size for the thread. Tapping the hole. Using a slitting saw to cut the slit. to use plenty of cutting fluid here otherwise the saw can end up seizing in the cut which is never a good thing. So those are the cranks finished, just doing a test assembly here. Once those are tightened they're very very securely held on the ends of the handlebars, not much will move them. And that's how it all fits together. So that's about it for this time, thanks for watching. Next time I should be into getting the seat finished off and the final finishing of things like the brake cables, the tilting lock mechanism if I fit one, uh, and the general finishing of the frame. So stick around and I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments or questions in the question section down below.